Time now on Sky Sports Radio for Going Greyhounds for your daily update of the latest news and tips. 10 to 11, and uh, Mick Cowley joining me from Greyhound Racing New South Wales. Morning, Mick. Good morning, Cosie. How are you surviving uh, isolation? Still good, mate? Yeah, still there. Just cruising along. We just It's adapt or perish, isn't it? Mate, very much so. My kids are actually telling me that there's a, a chance I may look like Santa Claus by Christmas with the, uh, the beard <laughs> going and the, uh, and the stomach starting to grow a little bit as well, mate. Yeah, well, why not, Mick? Now, we've got a bit of news. Ground Racing New South Wales yesterday around the Maitland track. Mate, we did indeed. We uh, There was a couple of incidents there on Monday night, as I think Ronnie alluded to yesterday. Uh, as a result of that, um, yeah, Maitland has, has temporarily been suspended from racing uh, and trialling while they, uh, there is an investigation, independent experts having a look at the track to see exactly what the problems are, if there are problems, that sort of thing. As a result of that, Cosy, uh, the meeting that was scheduled for tomorrow night at Maitland, that has unfortunately been abandoned. The meeting that was scheduled for uh, Maitland on Monday has now, this morning we've announced that it has been transferred and it will now be run at Gosford uh, for details for trainers of, of that program for that meeting. That's, uh, they can find that on the dogs.com.au. Uh, all the details for that Monday, that's Monday the 4th of May, uh, meeting at Gosford now. All right. Now, tonight at Richmond in the first, there's a nice greyhound going around called Lockout Paws. Glenn Suda has it. Let's have a listen back to a win at Richmond last Wednesday. Racing. Vicky's Queen midfield to go. Pure Charisma won the brief break, being tackled by Good Odds Kangaroo and railing through Lockout Paws and shot away. Around the outside, Rachel's Revenge on the move. Well back, Good Odds Kanga, followed by Bugatti Checkers and then Charm Impact. Vicky's Queen, but it's all over. Lockout Paws. Lockout Paws wins. Good game, Miners. Pure Charisma or on the outside, Rachel's Revenge. They'll follow it in by Bugatti Checkers and Good Odds Kanga. Vicky's Good win there, Mick. It was a great win, Cosy. A fantastic win, and we we're uh, actually fortunate to be joined by the trainer of Lockout Paws the, this morning, Glenn Souter. Glenn, thanks for coming on the show, mate. No worries, Mick. Pleasure, mate. It's uh, first up last week in that maiden heat. Um, impressive, was that kind of what you expected, judging on trial form? Yeah, mate. Yeah, I thought she'd run uh, certainly run well. She's been trialling well prior to that, but um, you know her issues is always at box rise. She sort of pours at the lids a bit and um, has a tendency to miss it sort of half a length a length, and then she really motors once she hits the ground and, and sort of gains momentum. So, you know, against the weaker grade last week, she was um, she was able to sort of gather them in pretty quickly, but the standard rises tonight, obviously, with uh, Peter, Peter Lagagione's good dog in the red that's opened up, you know, short at $1.28, and, um, yeah, she's going to have the... She's going to have got the job ahead of her, that's for sure. And she's... Um... She's not your standard young maiden. She's you've taken your time with her. Any reason for taking the time? Yeah, she was slow to slow to come to hand early days. Um, I got her, uh, I got her about eight months ago, and she had some maturity issues, as, as does the rest of the litter. I think they all all took their time, sort of coming to hand. I think Justin King's got a got a sister there that um, she sort of um, the penny dropped with her overnight. And Craig Chapel had one that um, took a while as well. That won at Richmond last week and. And um, there's another dog Peter Rogers has got that's going good. And, um, yeah, I think they're all in the same boat. They took a while to come to hand and, and the penny just dropped with them. And, yeah, I think they'll turn out to be a good litter, this, this litter. So. And, uh, yeah, it's obviously a short course tonight, but uh, you think she'll she'll get the 500 eventually? Yeah, based on her run home last week, I think she can come out a little bit quicker than that. So she came out 14.28 last week. Cause, you know, she can get that down to... 14.2, 14.15, um, then, yeah, there's all indications say that she'll she'll get the distance. That's the sort of, they're the sort of splits that you're looking forward to. That's them telling you that they want further sort of thing. So, yeah, if she can get her, um, her run home down. Um, but at the moment, the way she stretched out last week, I, I, I've got high hopes that she'll she'll get the 500. And the mother, uh, the mother had a strong 500 out. So, yeah, all indications at the moment are that she will. So, yeah. Mate, did you have her mother? No, I didn't. Uh, Craig Chapelail um, um, trained her mother, a very fast bitch. Um, yeah, she was. Uh, she uh, ran some scintillating times at Richmond and Wentworth Park. Um, and um, yeah, she's had I think a couple of litters now. But this this litter, I think, are going to be a, quite a hand. Turn out to be quite a handy litter. Um, yeah, there's there's probably four or five of them in there that um, I wouldn't be surprised if they pop up winning winning Wentworth Park races. You know, if we fast forward two or three months. 
Mate, indeed, indeed. Now, now tell me, you're, uh, you're a hobby trainer, you, you've got a full-time gig as well, but um, you've got what, three dogs in the kennel? Yeah, I've got three in the kennel, yeah, I work full-time um, in excavation, I was in the, in the AFL uh, industry for a long time, and yeah, at the moment it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, you sort of, I sort of gallop them and, and sort of, uh, you know, um, get them checked and then things like that when I can, I've got to sort of do it at odds and odd times, odd, odds and bods sort of times, um, you know, it's not. Uh, it's, it, it does make it difficult to compete uh, compete with the with the Lagagianis and the Magris and alike. But um, yeah, it's just, it, it's, I've, I'm making it work at the moment, which is good. You know. And I, I guess you know, in that situation, you, you've got to adapt, and it's good to have people around you that are able to adapt. You, you were telling me about you know being able to trial at, at unusual hours at, at various places and so forth. That's right. Yeah, yeah. I've got a local slipping track. Um, at, um, the Bankstown Airport there, run by uh, Ron Marston, and yeah, I'm able to able to uh, able to gallop and work her at odd times, and which is fantastic, you know. But um, I'll just fit that in around work, and it, it makes training uh, uh, makes training doable for the hobby trainer, you know. It's a it's a, it's a great facility, and and um, yeah, it makes a makes the job a lot easier for sure, rather than travelling long distances to gallop her or you know. Um, Getting to the beach uh, early in the morning or, or late at night, but yeah, this facility's uh, facility's A one and it makes it a lot easier, that's for sure. Now you mentioned uh, AFL previous previous life. You you spent quite a bit of time with the Swans first, and then a couple of seasons with the Giants. Uh, what was the role there? Uh, it was a production manager at Swans. It was an organisational role, and the same at um, at the Giants. Um, yeah, I was there for sixteen years um, at the Swans. Um, uh, fantastic time, you know. It was a, it was a circus life, but it was a great uh, great time in my life. And 2005 Grand Final, the highlight. Um, yeah, great environment, and um, and um, yeah, I do miss it. But um, you know, I've, uh, I'm um, into something else now, and I've sort of got my weekends back, and sort of been able to get some structure around the way I train the dogs and and life in general. So um, you know, it's uh, yeah, I certainly look back on it with fond memories, that's for sure. How did, how did you actually get into Graham racing? Uh, I went to a meeting at Lithgow um, when I was 16 years old and um, a fellow walked up to me and asked me to catch his dog and um, from that point on I, I was um, I was sort of hooked and um, I started writing letters to Sydney's premier greyhound trainers and at that time um, Jim and Christine Coleman um, wrote a letter back and said yes, um, you can come up and do some time with us. So I spent about four to six weeks up there with them on weekends and um, yeah, Master trainer Jim Coleman. He he showed me, um, you know, things like feeding and nutrition, and um, you know, getting a dog to an elite level of fitness and preparing it for an event. Um, so yeah, that's um, certainly um, certainly learned a lot there. Uh, it was a sort of sharp learning curve, but it's um, yeah, it's um, been great, you know. I mean, I guess that uh, that kind of shows two things. It's, it's easy to get hooked and, and difficult to ever shake off, but also the fact that people in the industry are, are willing to share their, their knowledge and their advice to, to help others out, to, to, to benefit others rather than you know, keeping it up for themselves. No, it was great, yeah. I mean, he's obviously um, five derbies and a, a, an absolute um, arsenal of feature race wins to his credit. You know, he was a master trainer and... Um, yeah, just uh, you know, little hints and pointers, and, and um, you know, understanding the animal and and um, yeah, getting it to that elite level and and um, you know, keeping it there is is it's certainly a fine art. So uh, yeah, it was it was it was well and truly appreciated at the time. That's for sure. And has it been a, a highlight in the, in the hobby training career so far? Yeah, I, I I've had a, a couple of Wentworth Park winners. Um, uh, you had to have a feature race winner. I had a uh, a finalist in the Ipswich auction maiden a few years ago, and unfortunately um, um, fell at the first turn. But um, yeah, she was um, yeah probably a, a, you know two or three Wentworth Park wins, and I've had some good dogs along the way. You know, um, yeah, a dog called Uncompromising a, a few years ago, and yeah, True Elegance. Um, yeah, they've strung together a, a, a few wins. You know, so yeah, it's 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 the little sort of victories that sort of make it all the worthwhile, you know, especially when you're a hobby trainer, you, you, um, you know, I, it's not as if I've, I'm a one-man sort of operation. I don't have that, um, don't have that um, base of owners behind me that um, can go out and sort of buy, you know, spend twenty, thirty, fifty thousand on a on a dog. You know, it's just sort of relying on, um, relying on sort of running a small team with a with a small operation, and 
and trying to get success that way. Yeah, well, hopefully uh, this girl tonight and the other couple in the kennel will uh, continue the enjoyment, satisfaction and, and success, hopefully, for you. Uh, good luck tonight, mate. Uh, as you said, it won't be easy with, with Pete's dog drawn in the one, but uh, strange things happen in racing. Yeah, that's right. Well, if she can begin a lot, begin a lot better tonight, I think she's right in it. You know, she, um, you know, her, her stories um, will be told when the box is open. So yeah, if she steps on terms and can go with Peter's dog early, and I think their run homes are were identical last week, so yeah, she's right in it. But um, yeah, as long as um, as long as she can step, then uh, then um, yeah, she'll be uh, that'll that'll tell a story. That's for sure. Mate, best of luck. Thanks very much for uh, for taking a few minutes to to have a chat with us this morning. And uh, mate, as I said, good luck tonight and good luck with the rest of the career. Okay, fantastic. Thanks, mate. Thanks, Glenn. So see there he was, Glenn Suter, a mm. hobby trainer with uh, a couple of good dogs, including one that's in it at Richmond tonight in race one. There was another bloke at the Swans who didn't mind a grand too. Plug a locket. <laughs> Had a little bit of success, didn't he? <laughs> just, didn't he? Just a bit. <laughs> Quite a bit. There's, a, there's, there's actually been a few at the Swans that uh, that uh, have got into greyhound racing. Uh, it, uh, I know Nick Davis loves a punt, and uh, he doesn't mind a greyhound race from time to time either. Yeah, who doesn't? <laughs>